Hello and welcome to another jog vlog session for the weather hazards and climate change topic. We are going to continue with looking at the weather hazard that is tropical cyclones. So in today's session we're going to be looking at the characteristics and impacts of tropical cyclones. So based on last session you know the conditions required to form a tropical cyclone. Um, you also know about the anatomy of a cyclone, so the eye, the eye wall, um, and you know about where they occur and their frequency. Um, but today we're going to actually start to look at why tropical cyclones are so dangerous, what they are like uh, and what impacts they can cause. So the first thing we're going to look at is um, hurricane scale. And it's, there's a hurricane scale called the, the most well known is the Saphir Simpson hurricane scale. And the Saphir Simpson hurricane scale um, really just categorizes hurricanes into um, seven categories. OK, there are five main categories, but there are also two others we'll talk about in a bit. So um, we'll begin with the with the most damaging category five hurricanes are any hurricane where the wind speed exceeds and, and sustain not just gusts. OK, the sustained wind speed is over 157 miles per hour. Now, in the UK, we um, think of the windiest days we get that, you know, the uproot trees and cause damage. You're looking at wind speeds of maybe 70, 80 miles per hour. Um, and even less than that in some cases, you know, if it's an older tree, um, then 60 miles an hour will blow it over. So 157 plus miles per hour in terms of wind speed is really, really significant. It's more than more than twice that particular um, wind speed. So you can see just how damaging the winds could be. And when it comes to the damage due to wind, um, we class the damage from a Category 5 hurricane as catastrophic. Um, homes, roofs will be ripped off, trees will go down, power lines gone, um, and the power um, can't be restored very easily. Now again, if we have a tree that goes on a line, 24 hours and our, our UK power networks um, people get it sorted and it's pretty good, but um, effectively a Category 5 hurricane could easily lead to a place being uninhabitable, so you can't live in there, for several weeks or months uh, because of the damage caused. Now the, the wind speeds go down according to the scale uh, and there are other factors that are involved in hurricane scales because wind speed is not the only factor but it certainly is a big factor. Um, the two categories that actually uh, before a hurricane is classed as a hurricane are a tropical depression or a tropical storm and we actually do get affected by depressions and storms in the UK um, but you can see our wind speeds don't really go much above 70 odd miles per hour so um, we never really get to hurricane status when it comes to um, our particular dangers doesn't mean that they don't cause problems and we still get people that die and, and injuries and, and all sorts of damage property damage in our tropical depressions and tropical storms um, but we really should be thinking ourselves lucky that we are not affected by hurricanes so um, that's one thing the Saphir Simpson scale and I believe that's a handout on 365 if you want your own copy of the Saphir Simpson scale excuse me but tropical cyclones um, uh, are categorised slightly differently and actually I've, I've got a video here um, on YouTube which again is saved on 365 but you can see the, the YouTube link there um, so please feel free get on the Joglogs folder and um, watch the video and it's ever so slightly different now again it's not the Saphir Simpson scale this is a very a slightly different scale but the um, principles are the same the higher up the scale the worse the tropical cyclone so this is obviously from the Australian government because they are the area where cyclones are the impact whereas if you go to the U USA uh, and the Caribbean hurricanes are the thing that affect those so their scale ever so slightly different but the higher the number up to five the worse the tropical storm so um, watch that video and all you need to do really is you don't have to know about the specific uh, miles per hour numbers and things like that if ever that was required in an exam they'd list it for you you would need to do something with that information but just so you've got an understanding that the, the damage goes up often with the impact of the uh, wind and the storm surge not always though you can get category 5 hurricanes which actually affect less property um, and kill less people than a category 3 hurricane for example now you might think why but it's all about where that hurricane goes if that hurricane goes to a place where there's not many people or like a less um, populated area then it's going to cause less damage than if it makes landfall in New York for example so um, it says homework but this is a task I'd like you to complete um, during this session anyway um, effectively there is a list here of 
hurricanes or tropical storms, etc., that have occurred um, in 20, oh, sorry, 2005. So it was a bit of a bumpy year for um, tropical cyclones, and um, because you can see that actually there was a, a variety, a wide variety of tropical cyclones. So you had Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Dennis, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harvey, Irene, um, Ten, <laughs> Jose, Katrina. Now. This is the Katrina. Um, and again, if you look at the data for Katrina, which again was a, a lasted a week, the, the impact of that, um, in terms of where it started and before it ended, um, the wind speeds exceeded 175 miles per hour, which puts it firmly in Category 5 hurricane status. Um, the damage in US millions, uh, millions of dollars, was 108,000 million. So that is essentially... One uh, hundred eight billion dollars. That's one hundred eight billion dollars of damage. That is a massively damaging hurricane, and you can see it by far the most effective in terms of damage cost and deaths. Um, one thousand eight hundred thirty-six people lost their lives in uh, Hurricane Katrina. Now, based on the wind speed, you might say, "Well, that's no surprise." But let's go to uh, Hurricane Stan, which happened that same year, two thousand five, in October. Hurricane Stan got to wind speeds of 80 miles per hour, 80. So based on our Saffir Simpson scale, 80 would put Hurricane Stan firmly in a category one hurricane. So you might think, oh, that's not such a big deal, but it cost over three billion, nearly four billion dollars worth of damage, and it killed 1,668 people. Now that is not far off Hurricane Katrina level of death, yet the hurricane size wasn't as big in terms of its Saffir Simpson. So please don't be fooled by thinking that the bigger the, the hurricane and the bigger the tropical cyclone, the worse the damage or the worse the deaths, because that's not always the case. So what I'd like you to do is classify each hurricane and colour code it according to, using the wind speed, according to what category it would be in. If it's not a category um, 1 to 5 hurricane, basically ignore it. Okay, and um, so if it's if it doesn't exceed, if it doesn't get above 75 miles per hour or whatever, then it's not essentially a hurricane. Um, but so category one to five hurricanes, color code them, and then just have a little look at what you notice because there's a couple of questions attached to it um, with regards to um, what I want you to do with this information. So this homework sheet is on Microsoft 365 on the jog in the jog vlogs folder. Please complete it, color code it, and then answer the questions that are, are completed alongside that. Do that now. Don't do it for homework. And when you're finished, you can unpause the screen and I'll continue. OK, so um, now you've uh, started doing some classification of hurricanes, just so you've been given some examples. And so you can see why, um, you know, just the size of the hurricane isn't necessarily um, going to impact the number of deaths, but often it does. Um, we need to break down the impacts of hurricanes. Uh, and so I've put four categories of things that hurricanes do. So I know we've looked at the high winds and that's an obvious one and high winds is clearly a big factor and you can see one of the impacts of tropical cyclones is indeed high winds so you need to write that down as one of the impacts and you've just been given some examples about how high winds can affect stuff but try and consider why is it that high winds themselves cause the problems. Think about the fact that it causes debris to get blown around, it causes trees to come down, and you know when those trees fall onto houses, they can cause financial damage, they can cause deaths. Um, so that's just one aspect of tropical cyclones. But tropical cyclones don't just give you high winds, they also give you long periods of intense rainfall. And again, the flooding associated with that rainfall can be quite severe. Um, Linked into the rainfall, if you've got uh, unstable slopes, you can also get landslides. You can see one big landslide here that's completely engulfed a major highway, um, and and the cars and stuff and the rescue operations involved. These are all diggers trying to clear the rubble. Um, but even more damaging, and something which you need to be most aware of, because this is what really caused the most damage with Hurricane Katrina, was that these tropical cyclones create storm surges. Now we have seen storm surges previously. We've looked at storm surges when it came to the coastal aspect of the UK landscapes topic. And a storm surge is basically a wall of water. And the wall of water is created because these tropical cyclones, um, hurricanes or typhoons are all the same thing, but in the sense that they are all extremely low pressure systems. 
that means air is rising and it's rising rapidly and because of that rising air there is less um, pressure on the ocean so the oceans or the seas will effectively kind of rise up as a result because they're not being pushed down now you combine that with the very very strong winds you know 100 mile an hour winds plus um, you're going to get massive waves so not only is the sea higher by quite some way it's also producing the biggest waves it produces and that can create this thing called a storm surge which could engulf land and um, again just google images of the damage of, of hurricane, hurricane Katrina and you will see just how far storm surges can travel inland and the level of damage they can do so these four different knock-on effects or, or impacts are all to do with tropical cyclones and if you're in an exam it won't just say you know talk about the damage tropical cyclones do you won't get away with just saying are oh, they the high winds yes that's great but you can talk about more you, know, you could you could see this as an eight mark question you know examine or not examine sorry um uh, assess the different impacts that tropical cyclones can bring to people and the environment you would need to say more than just high winds because it's about impact so you can say they bring high winds this does this they create landslides this to happen that you know as a result of that this happens okay so you need to know more than just one impact now there are videos you can see attached to every single one of these um, little sections which again are all saved on office 365 in the jog logs folder i know i keep referring to it but it's worthwhile you going on there if you don't and you want to just type in the youtube things i'll recommend it there you go have a little look at that pause the screen so you can jot that in for intense rainfall there you go there's one there again pause the screen if you want to plop that in separately come on where you gone Oop. there's the storm surges one and there's the landslides one but these youtube links might be gone so i have downloaded the videos so you can use them for educational purposes um via that job logs folder okay so um that effectively can be summarized here now for your notes and because i don't just expect you to write down just the title i am actually providing you with lots of detail about each of those four impacts so don't just write down high winds landslides intense rainfall storm surges write down all of this too now i know it's a lot of writing um, and but i again i think most of you probably appreciate the fact that i've summarized all the knock-on effects or potential issues that these could um, potentially bring because in an eight mark scenario remember we are assessing the impact of different things it's never going to be good enough to just say high winds so high winds describe what high winds are well tropical cyclones produce winds of over 119 kilometers per hour or whatever it might be so that is disc name describe now it's an assess question so now i've got to link it to the question how does that cause damage well it causes damage to property because it removes roof tiles things like sheds shacks it can break and uproot trees and what are the knock-on effects of that well both of these lead to knock-on impacts as people can be hit by flying debris trees can land on buildings and people and again can you give an example um in hurricane katrina the winds uh got up to 175 miles per hour and um, led to 108 billion dollars worth of damage and 1,800 deaths there you go that really in a in a box is an eight mark paragraph isn't it now if it says specifically um, impacts on the environment you'd have to change where you go with this so again tropical cyclones do winds this causes damage to property but it uproots trees is the impact on the environment these uh, this has a knock-on effect as trees are a habitat for certain species um, for example uh, again provide a stat it's not easy to provide a stat there really but there we go so high winds get all this information down intense rainfall I've given you loads of information what do we mean by intense rainfall well cyclones pick up lots of water that causes damage to property by flooding airports railways etc 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 and again for each of them if you can identify an example then you've got a ready-made paragraph essentially for any eight mark question that says assess in this particular topic all right so that's definitely worthwhile doing pause the screen as a minimum you need all the notes for each of these in their categories use subheadings use color coding whatever and if you are looking to aim for sort of grade seven up i would for each one try and find uh, an example a stat a, a case study something which you can provide the examiner that shows you can apply your understanding to a particular case study 
Okay, pause the screen. That'll take you a good 25 minutes at least to do, I would have thought. Um, so pause the screen until you've got that finished, please. And when you're ready, unpause the screen. Okay, so um, that actually ends that session. So um, you've got now an overview, uh, and quite a detailed one to be fair, with ready-made eight mark paragraphs kind of done and dusted um, on the impacts that tropical cyclones bring. Never just say basic things like high winds, rainfall, link it to something else. Try and be able to expand on your answer, talk about how those different things can lead to other knock-on effects on people and the environment. Okay. Um, the next session is going to be looking at a particular example of a tropical cyclone, um, which we tie in with Seneca as well, which is really handy. Um, and so I will see you next time for another Jog Vlogs. Thank you very much for listening.